Good morning, and welcome to the Sanctuary of Common Lutheran Church. We welcome you to worship virtually, and we also want to remind you that we worship together in person at 9 o'clock every Sunday morning. We also have Sunday School for Children immediately after worship. Next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, a day that we have set aside in the church to celebrate the fact that all, all, whether living or dead, are together in Christ. We also welcome several of our young people to the communion table on that Sunday, so we ask that you keep them in your prayers. Standing directly behind me is Jenna Olson, and she will be helping me with the service today, so please welcome Jenna. And thank you, Jenna. Um, last but not least, congratulations to the Coleman Egan football teams and volleyball teams for a great season. Today is Reformation Sunday. You will know the truth, Jesus said, and the truth will set you free. Before the truth is finished with us, though, it demands that we admit that we are not already free. We are enslaved to sin. This is the part of the truth that Luther called the law, the hard part that points out that we are controlled by our fears and our desires, our self-absorption and self-doubt, our addiction and facade. Here's the truth. You are not your Sunday best or your Facebook profile. You are broken, enslaved by your attempts to cover it up. That can be hard to hear, but until it sinks in, we are unable to be released and receive the truth of the gospel, the good news of grace. Today, we celebrate Reformation Day, and in the spirit of Martin Luther, the church must always be reforming, always pointing beyond itself to God's grace. The temptation is always there to settle for a little, a cozy collective of our most presentable selves, the right side of social issues, pat answers to incomprehensible mysteries of the universe. Jesus' invitation is to bring the mess that we're in, the mess that we are. We are called to show up as our true selves, fears and regrets and doubts and all. God can handle it. The communion of saints that is us. The people of God can handle it. You are loved. You are forgiven. You are free. The truth of God that sets us free first tears us open. Church can and must be a place where we bring our broken selves and encounter the healing power of a God who sees us, knows us, loves us as we are, and sets us free. In freedom, then, let us begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is in complete and utter confidence that God can, that God is, and that God will always be present for us, that we are able to confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to be God's children in the world. Amen. And now, let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Give them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. 
and bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear the lessons. The first reading is Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write on it on their hearts, and I will be their God. They shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 46. God is our refu refugee and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we, we will, will not fear, fear though, though the earth be moved, and, and though the mountains, mountains shake in the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city, city of God, God the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The, the nations, nations rage and, and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come, Come now, regard, regard the works of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second reading is Romans 3:19, 3, 3, 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human will be justified in his sight. By deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed. It is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift. Through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance had, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but the, by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed in the law, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And now the Holy Gospel according to John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The Son has a place there forever. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And because it is Reformation Day, instead of a sermon, we have invited a special guest to speak with us this morning. So settle back, and I'm sure she'll be with you in just a minute. Hello, 
Hello? Is anyone here? Oh, yes? Hello? Oh, yes. Hello there. Can you direct me to your mistress, please? Mistress? Yes. I'm looking for Mrs. Luther. Mrs. Martin Luther? I'm told that this is their home. Do I have the right place? <laughs> yes, you have the right place. Welcome. I'm Katie. Well, <clears throat> it's nice to meet you. Now, if you'll direct me to your mistress, Mrs. Luther? <laughs> I'm afraid you found her. I am Mrs. Luther, or as my dear husband christened me just today, the lady of the new pig market. Katie. Oh dear, I'm so sorry. I didn't expect... You didn't expect me to look as though I've been supervising the penning of pigs. Well, no, frankly. Well, I'm sorry. But I've just brought them home. Now we can add pork to the beef, chickens, and garden produce that we raise. They're a little smelly, though, are they not? Um. <laughs> oh, goodness, it's all right. I smelled much worse. It's a wonder Martin didn't throw us all back when he first saw us way back when my sister nuns and I escaped the convent in the empty herring barrels. Escape? Why would you have to escape your convent? Couldn't you just tell him you didn't want to be a nun anymore? Oh, no, not back in my day. You see, I'd lived with the nuns since I was five years old. They'd given me an education, and I had pledged my life to the Lord. We was breaking both civil and church law to leave, but we were so struck by the truth of Dr. Luther's writings, particularly that of the freedom of the gospel, a loving God alone, that we couldn't abide staying under the heavy hand of the Roman Catholic Church any longer. So we got a message to Dr. Luther asking his aid, and he arranged for us to hide in the barrels while the delivery man rode out of the convent walls on Easter Eve, 1523. How exciting. Yes, and uncomfortable and smelly, as I've said before. <laughs> Although I think he was a bit overwhelmed at first, Dr. Luther did his best to find homes for us all. Some went back to their families, but not very many. It was illegal to harbor a runaway nun. But within two years, all of us were working or married, except for me. Well, I was engaged once, but my suitor's family refused to allow him to wed a rebel, a, such a rebel nun. So I made up my mind then and there. I would marry Dr. Luther or no one. I take it he gave in? <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, darling? Martin won't let you go with them. Well, Marguerite, you know you are not allowed to sit with Papa and the boys when Papa has students. <laughs> Marguerite, I know Papa always lets you, but sometimes Papa's heart gets in the way of his head. Now, little girls do not belong on their Papa's laps while Papa is trying to teach. Sweetheart, I tell you what, why don't you go ask Herr Schmidt to give you a pitcher of beer to take to Papa, and then you can come out back with me. It sounds as though you have a very fam happy family. <laughs> we have our moments, to be sure, but both Martin and I dearly love our children. I know you're very busy, so I would just like to ask you one question. How many children do you have? Um, we have six. Hans is the oldest, and then Martin and Paul and little Marguerite, plus our two little girls in heaven, Elizabeth and Magdalena. And the unborn baby that we lost. I'm sorry. It's all right. We miss them every day, but we know that they are safe in God's keeping. We also care for four other little ones, my nephew Fabian among them. And then, of course, there are the strays Martin brings home. Strays? Well, that's the best word I can think of to describe them. All the people Martin invites to stay with us. Stay with you. Yes. Well, it's not like we don't have plenty of room. Living in a former dormitory for students studying at Wittenberg, the Black Cloister, as it was called, assures that we have plenty of room. If there's one big difference between Martin and me, I would have to say it's generosity. No, that's not fair. I think I'm a very generous person. I raise crops and livestock and make beer and wine so that I'm able to feed the many visiting scholars. I care for our children. I freely host those who have come long distances to consult with Martin, and I have even partitioned off part of our home to use as a hospital when it's necessary. But Martin? 
but Martin would give away his last shirt if I didn't watch him. He cares nothing for finances. The publishers made a fortune on his books until Martin let me negotiate with them. <laughs> he just wanted people to read them. Oh my, forgive me for being so bold, but have you talked to Dr. Luther about this? Oh goodness, <laughs> talk till I'm blue in the face, but Martin, God bless his heart, just chuckles and said, Ah, oh, Katie, my rib, tis for this reason God gave me you. So I do my best to make ends meet. And as Martin admits, I do it quite well. He's happy to leave the business the end of bills in my hands. Yes? Genevieve, Gen excuse me, Genevieve, don't panic now. Remember, Jesus asks us to make friends with our enemies, and that includes Sue. Genevieve is a girl from the neighboring town. Her parents are very poor, and so we offered her a home in exchange for her help. She learns to run a household, and we get... Well, sometimes we just get the opportunity to give to another. She's a bit inexperienced, but I'm sure she'll be a wonderful wife someday. I know you're very busy, so I'd just like to ask you one question. What would you like people to know about Catherine von Hora Luther? What legacy would you like to leave? Well, <laughs> that one's easy. When Martin decided to marry me, he did so knowing that marriage would please his father, rile the Pope, cause the angels to laugh and the devils to weep. This first step showed the church that God's will, as revealed through Jesus, was that men and women are both sacred, and marriage no less sacred than celibacy. Paul writes in Galatians, There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Jesus himself chose women as followers. Women were the first to see him alive after the resurrection and were the first to carry the news to men. I know in my heart that had the times been different, there would have been women among the first disciples. Well, of course, though, in that day, as in mine, women were never really listened to. And Martin listened to you? Yes. We listened to each other. We complimented each other. I was his morning star, as he called me, and he was, he was my love. Thank you, Mrs. Luther. Thank you. Now we will confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in, in God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you, Jenna. And don't go. Um, let's see. Oh, and please pray with me. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel. Oh God, where your church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the earth changes, as mountains shake and the waves roar, may we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all living things. Sustain all peoples and lands recovering from natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking and protect all in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Release those living in bondage to debts, 
chronic pain or addiction. Grant healing touch to those who are ill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have remained firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and those who work for the renewal of the church today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold us in your loving arms. Also enfold, uh, enfold all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, receive the benediction. God will write a new covenant on our hearts. God will be our God, and we will be God's people. No longer shall we teach one another or say to one another, Know the Lord. For we shall all know God. We go from here now, then, in the name of God, the source of life, the word of truth, and the spirit of love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. We ask that you join us again next week. And as I said, please join us in person if you can.